And hello once again, everybody. Welcome back to SFF 180. This is Mailbag Monday for the 30th of June, 2014. The year is half over, amazingly enough. And uh, here I am with 10 new books to... Ah, they're teetering. Uh, well, anyway, you get the idea. Uh, so back to sort of an average week, but it's still a lot of stuff. I would have sworn that nobody was going to watch last week's episode being, what, like 23 minutes long and having so many books involved. And, and it was that was really an effort to do that one. Um, but uh, again, I'm so grateful for the ongoing channel support. Uh, that uh, episode got well above average views. I, uh, you know, have blown past 500 subs. Thank you all so much. Uh, you really are making this um, this little experiment of mine work out. Um, this, moving on into YouTube and starting this channel has turned out to be one of the best decisions I've made in, in a long time. So thank you all very much for being here. And without any further ado, uh, let's dig into the book, shall we? And this first one is a package from Tor. Okay, here's one that I have really been looking forward to. This is the new novel by Paul Park. Some of you may, may or may not have heard of him. Uh, he's a literary uh, science fiction fantasy writer. His last big work was a four-volume um, series, The Princess of Romania. And uh, this is his new book, All Those Vanished Engines. Uh, let's see what this is all about. A new book by Paul Park is always going to be interesting. Paul Park returns to science fiction after a decade spent on the impressive four-volume A Princess of Romania fantasy. With an extraordinary, intense, compressed SF novel in three parts, each set in its own alternate history universe. All Those Vanished Engines is, is inspired by the text Park created for Stephen Vitiello's art installation of the same name located at the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art. Huh. The first section is set in the aftermath of the Civil War, in a world in which the Queen of the North has negotiated a two-nation settlement. The second, taking place in northwestern Massachusetts, investigates a secret project during World War II in a time somewhat like the present. The third is set in the near-future United States with aliens from history. So it's a three-part novel. Um, they're comparing it to The Fifth Head of Cerberus, by Gene Wolfe, old book by Gene Wolfe, and fans of David Mitchell's Cloud Atlas also. Um, so considering that it is not a very uh, long book, it is quite ambitious. It must pack a lot of story and a lot of ideas into a, into a very tight space. So as you see, Paul Park, uh, never dull moment with this guy. All those vanished engines is in stores tomorrow, July the 1st. All right, if you are a fan of the Hickmans, here's a new novel by Tracy Hickman and Laura Hickman. It is called Unwept. It's the first book in something called The Nightbirds. Uh, also comes out tomorrow. It's a haunting story of a young girl, lost memories, and a web of secrets. Gammon, Maine is a remote seaside town where everyone seems to know Ellis Harkington better than she knows herself. But she doesn't remember any of them. Uh-oh. Unknown events have robbed Ellis of her memory. Concerned individuals who claim to be friends and loved ones insist that she simply needs to recuperate and that her memories may return in time, but for her own sake, so they claim, they refuse to divulge what has brought her to this state. Ellis finds herself adrift in a town of ominous mysteries, cryptic hints, and disturbingly familiar strangers. The Nightbirds, a clique of fashionable young men and women, claim her as one of their own, but who can she really trust? And what of the phantom suitor who visits her in dreams? Is he a memory, a figment of her imagination, or a living nightmare beyond rational explanation? Only her lost past holds the answer she seeks if she can uncover its secrets before she falls prey to an unearthly killer. Unwept by Tracy and Laura Hickman is in stores tomorrow, the 1st of July. Okay, and a little package from Macmillan. Well, everybody, uh, here is something that I've been looking forward to. You know, there are no secrets around here. I have always been a very big supporter of John Scalzi, and here is his newest book, Lock-In, which is uh, kind of a different thing than he uh, has usually given us in the past. So let's check it out. Not too long from today, a new highly contagious virus makes its way across the globe. Most who get sick experience nothing worse than flu, fever, and headaches. But for the unlucky 1%, nearly 5 million souls in the United States alone, the disease causes lock-in. Victims are fully awake and aware, but unable to move or respond to any stimulus. A quarter of a century later, in a world shaped by what's now known as Hayden's Syndrome, rookie FBI agent Chris Shane is paired with veteran agent Leslie Van. The two of them are assigned what appears to be a Hayden-related murder at the Watergate Hotel with a suspect who is an integrator, someone who can let the locked-in borrow their bodies for a time. If the integrator was carrying a Hayden client, then naming the suspect for the murder will be that much more complicated. 
but complicated doesn't begin to describe the puzzle that ensues. As Shane and Van begin to unravel the threads of the murder, it becomes clear that the real mystery and the real crime is bigger than anyone could have imagined. So, it's basically science fictional, near future crime fiction. Kind of a different thing for Scalzi. I've been looking forward to it, so um, there you are. Coming out from Tor in August. And by the way, have I mentioned on the episode yet today just how hot it is here in Austin today? It's just crazy. Horrible. I mean, even just um, barely being outside, you, know, you, just, you feel it. It just gets all over you and it's gross. Ugh. Okay. Oh, well, here's this. All right. You probably remember this. It wasn't, uh, maybe it was just episode before last when uh, I told you about Overlord, the new event thriller a uh, novel by David Goleman. I got the art for that, and here is the finished copy. There's something else from Macmillan. Hmm. Oh boy, oh boy. I've been looking forward to this, <laughs> although probably not uh, in exactly the same way I've been looking forward to the new Scalzi book. Uh, Kevin J. Anderson and Brian Herbert's uh, Hellhole Inferno. Um, this will be the third book in this series, and I've only read the first one, but um, I did review Hellhole on my website right back when it came out, before this channel started. And it was one of the more entertaining um, bad reviews I've ever written, shall we say. I'm going to link it below, just so that in case you haven't read it, uh, you can go and enjoy that right now. But um, it was an entertaining and yet deliriously silly first book uh, in, in an original trilogy, you know, by the guys who are writing all of the Dune extended, expanded universe Dune books. And so uh, here we have Hellhole Inferno um, coming out in, looks like, what's it say here? August, from Tor. All right, Inferno, Hellhole. Sounds very hellish. Okay, this is a book that I have already received in ARC form. It's called Cedars. The author is A.J. Colucci. Uh, the idea here is, racked with guilt uh, over fears of a monster being released upon the world as a result of his botany experiments, George Brooks, 75-year-old recluse, climbs off the top of a cliff and plummets to his death. George's fears are unfortunately realized when the heirs to his estate arrive on the island several weeks later in Cedars by A.J. Colucci. Um, anyway, uh, following George's guilt-written demise, his daughter Isabel and her three teenagers, Jules Beecher, a friend and fellow botanist, and Ginny Shufflebottom, a contentious English woman who funded George Reese. Really? Ginny Shufflebottom? Anyway, she funded the research, so they arrive on the island. They'll be isolated on the frigid island for two weeks until the next supply boat arrives, which tells me that they're going to be monstered on uh, very badly. So, Cedars by A.J. Colucci. Um, this is from St. Martin's Press, and it drops on the 15th of July. Okay, and here is a thickish package from Hatchets, uh, the home of Orbit. Good old Hatchets. Ah. Okay, but this is not an Orbit book. It's from another one of their imprints, but this is uh, one that has already come out, uh, but it has been uh, getting uh, praise in quite a few critical circles here in SF. It's called The First Fifteen Lives of Harry August. The author is Claire North, and it's described as an astonishing reinvention of the time travel narrative. Um, so, uh, let's just see what it's about really quickly, shall we? Uh, Harry August is on his deathbed again. No matter what he does or the decisions he makes, when death comes, Harry always returns to where he began, a child with all the knowledge of a life he has already lived a dozen times before. Nothing ever changes. and So it's like Groundhog Day, except you do it from birth. Uh, until now, as Harry nears the end of his eleventh life, a little girl appears at his bedside. I nearly missed you, Dr. August, she says. I need to send a message. This is the story of what Harry does next, and what he did before, and how he tries to save a past he cannot change, and a future he cannot allow. So this is the first 15 lives of Harry August, and uh, it is out in stores right now. Let me know. Ah, uh, HarperCollins. Okay, uh, Sandman Slim fans, if you're a fan of that series, uh, Richard Cadry has a new book uh, in the saga, The Getaway God. Um, let's uh, see what this one's all about, shall we? Wow, it took me some time to actually find the synopsis on this uh, sale sheet. Okay, Sandman Slim must save himself and the entire world from the wrath of some enraged and vengeful ancient gods in this sixth high-octane adventure in the New York Times best-selling series. Uh, so it's an urban fantasy series, but uh, quite a bit edgier uh, than most, apparently. None, though, are as fearsome 
uh, as the vindictive Angra Omya, the Old Gods, but their imminent invasion is only one of Stark's problems right now. L.A. is descending into chaos, and a new evil is stalking the city. No ordinary killer, Saint Nick, takes Stark deep into a conspiracy that stretches from Earth to Heaven and Hell. He's also the only person alive who may know how to keep the world from going extinct. So, we have uh, the Getaway God. Uh, this is uh, looks like it's dated for August. What is this thing? What is this? This just came out of it. Um, free ebook download of Metrophage, another a novel by Richard Candry. Huh. Um. Okay. Thanks. Um. Uh, th this was just in here. Um. All right. So there we go. Uh, Getaway God, the new Sandman Slim opus, comes out in August. Okay, and this is something also from Harper Voyager. It's called Soda Pop Soldier. The author is Nick Cole, the author of the Wasteland Saga, and it says right here, Call of Duty meets Diablo in this fast-paced, action-packed novel from the author of the Wasteland Saga. Let's see if uh, we can find out more, shall we? Let's see, Soda Pop Soldier envisions a world where millions watch and compete regularly on massive multiplayer online role-playing games like now. These games are the venue of choice for everything from a lucrative career as a gamer to an illicit black market. Life is a shattered shell of what it once was, as the rich and prosperous have literally moved upwards right into outer space, leaving a once thriving metropolis like New York City a dilapidated slum populated by those who can't afford to be elsewhere. Talented gamer Perfect Question is caught in the crossfire between the virtual world and the real one, and he can't decide which one is the worst place to be. Out of virtual reality, life sucks. His girlfriend is growing distant, he can't make rent, and he finds himself in a poorly heated, mostly empty apartment with no friends except a tumbler of whiskey and a handful of video game avatars manned by people half a world away. Boy, isn't that just hitting close to home there. In-game, things aren't much better. He's a professional player on the Cola Corp team in the modern warfare game Warworld, and he's on the losing side, which means that he's not getting paid. Driven by a need to settle his bills, Perfect Question ignores his morals and resorts to playing in The Black, an illegal memorpaga where sex, drugs, and murder are available at the right price. But when his two gaming alter egos converge with his real life, Perfect Question gets dragged against his will into a psychopath's personal quest to hack the global economy and steal everything. And I guess they mean everything, because everything is italicized. As virtual reality and analog reality collide, I, no one's ever called the, the real analog reality. I've never actually... That's nice. Thank you. Perfect Question can no longer hide behind his pixelated avatar and must take charge of his life or risk losing it. The book is Soda Pop Soldier by Nick Cole. Comes out in August. And last but by no means least, we have a nice heavy hardcover from Random House. And I was wrong! It's not a hardcover. It was just so thick and heavy and dense that it felt like one. But this book is called Scarlet Tides. The author is David Hare, and this is the sequel to a book called Mage's Blood, uh, which I got a little while back and have been meaning to read. Uh, it's epic fantasy, but of course it's on my big pile, which you've all seen. Uh, but now that, again, book two is out, um, this one comes out October the 7th of this year, and it continues the series begun in Mage's Blood. So let me see if I can find something in the way of a synopsis here that will not, uh, like, spoil stuff if you haven't read the first book. <laughs> because I haven't read the first book yet, damn it. Well, let's see, apparently the best I can do is it, this is all set on a world called Urta, and uh, it says with the unlikely, unlikely excuse me, heroes of Aleron, a failed mage, Ramita, a lowly market maid, and Cymbelia, our Cymbalea, the daughter of a gypsy set on ending a world of war, Scarlet Tides, is an impressive world-building feat that proves that sometimes even weapons and magic cannot overcome the power of love and loyalty. Once well, a great sentiment there. And um, ser seriously, for an arc, this is one of the most massive, chunky, you know, this is basically release quality. I mean, most arcs are kind of like built to fall apart. It's, um, yeah, close to 700 pages, so if you like your fantasies big and thick and epic and full of war and magic and stuff, um, well, here is the second volume in David Hare's trilogy. It's Scarlet Tides, available October 7th. And that is all I've got on the mailbag this week, folks. As always, thank you very much for joining me. You know the drill. Let me know in the comments which of these books looks most exciting to you, which you would like for me to check out first. And uh, if you enjoyed watching, of course, as always, please like, share, and sub to the channel. Help the channel grow. I uh, had a very, very busy and productive week last week, so you're going to start seeing the fruits of some of that labor uh, on the channel this week. So um, look for some new reviews coming up. So you guys take care. See you all next time, and happy reading.